We've already talked in some depth about Donald Trump's stated position on Iran and the fact that perhaps Trump's boxes of confidential documents contained important information about potential conflict with Iran and information, for example, that there's been a long-standing intention to militarily engage Iran, and that's been part of the problem. Let's have a look at this, because this is an interesting turning point. As tensions escalate in the Middle East, is it possible that Trump, whether you love him or hate him, and it will be one of those, because no one's impartial on Trump, that's why you can't find an unbiased juror anywhere, because of the constant high-octane hysteria that surrounds Trump. Do you think that this is about Stormy Daniels and hush money, or do you think potentially Trump is an anti-establishment figure? Is he the swamp drainer that he claims to be? And as Joe Biden acquires another nickname, Genocide Joe, due to the United States participation in activity that ultimately facilitates the ongoing genocide in Gaza, Trump's crowd are starting to enjoy Sleepy Joe's new nickname. Let's have a look at this. She is a big problem. Genocide Joe, good nickname, could be catchy, it might stick. But is anyone impartial on the subject of Donald Trump now? And is anyone impartial on the subject of an escalating Middle Eastern war? And exactly when did this war begin? Did this war begin on October the 7th? Or when you hear words and place names like Jerusalem and Damascus, are there significant clues in that? And when did America become co-opted by military industrial complex interests? And when did John Bolton, one of the most hawkish men in American political life, become a darling of the liberal and progressive media. Remember, their whole raison d'etre, their whole aesthetic is, we are the progressive media. We are the reasonable ones. We are the academics. Hold your nose. There's a basket of deplorables somewhere nearby. When did they start showcasing John Bolton? John Bolton, who believes that Dick Cheney, the warmonger, the Halliburton Iraq warlord, Dick Cheney should be the president of the United States, according to John Bolton. Let's have a look. And you've said you're going to write someone in in November. That's what I did in 2020, and I'll do it again this November. Who did you write in in 2020? You've never revealed that before. Well, uh, I, I might as well say it uh, now. I voted for Dick Cheney. Wow. And I'll vote for Dick Cheney again this November. You'll write in Dick Cheney. That's right. What made you write him in? because he was a principled Reaganite conservative, and he still is. Remember when he shot someone in the face? Yeah, I do remember that. Dick Cheney loves war and violence so much that even when he's out just in a leisure activity, someone might get shot. I don't even think they were hunting. I think they were playing golf. And I'm spelling that with an O, not a U. Age is no longer a factor in American presidential politics, so his age doesn't disqualify him. And I think he'd do an immensely better job than either Trump or Biden. What about his daughter, Liz Cheney? Well, I like Liz a lot. And, uh, you know, maybe someday she'll get my write-in vote, too. But right now, I'll stick with her father. I like Dick Cheney. I like Liz Cheney. I like anyone that will advocate for war and that is anti-Trump. Do you know there are many people that believe, in fact, isn't this reporting from a left-wing legacy media outlet, an online advocate of the Democratic Party? Isn't the reason that John Bolton left the Trump administration is because Trump wouldn't let him start a war? So why is Trump getting mired in this lawfare? Is it because of an affair or is it because he wouldn't engage in warfare? This is uh, some reporting from Vox. Now, Vox is hardly a friend of Donald Trump. When Bolton joined the administration in 2018, the worry was that the arch-nationalist hawk would convince the war-averse Trump. The fact that someone's war-averse seems to be a pretty bloody good quality in an American president, except unless America are directly under attack. Like, unless China start circling the United States of America much in the manner that the United States are militarily surrounding China right now in the South China Seas, unless Russia start to situate missile bases and KGB forces in Mexico in much the same way that the CIA are co-opting Ukraine and trying to use it as a vassal state, then, yeah, let's tool up, 
baby. Let's get ready to go. But until then, America's might ought be utilized to deploy the values of peace. We can't bring you this content without your love and devotion and without the support of our partners. So it's so great when we've got a fantastic one like today's. Your body is 80% water. I know that already. Water put in your body therefore affects 80% of your health. That's just science. Tap water, bottled water can be dead. Dead water, isn't that disgusting? Like stagnant pond water. Acidic or poisonous. 70% of our immune system is in our guts. Contaminated water, poor diet and pesticides weaken your gut to nearly 20% functionality. You can see I'm looking at this little guy, can't you? Hello, darling. Air Water Healing Echo Plus infuses water with hydrogen, ionizing your water and bringing it to sweet lady life. Life itself, the expression of the divine, that which separates us from endless, limitless death. UVC2 light kills 99.9% .9 of harmful germs, bacteria, E. coli, and for all I know, other harmful things that we can't even understand. Feel the difference, increase the energy, slow aging, improve muscle recovery, regulate heart disease, diabetes, reduce wrinkles, speed up wound healing. Now this comes with a five year warranty. That means you can get it right now, right now from airwaterhealing.com using my promo code brand for a discount, a mysterious discount that I'm not even prepared to tell you about. And you won't have to think about it for five years. If it stops working for five years, you just go, what's that darling? You want me to drink you and you're full of tequila. I love this little guy. That means for five years, you don't have to think about it. So use the brand discount, replace dead water, fill your energy level surge. I'm a surgeon. Go to airwaterhealing.com, use the promo code brand so they know I sent you and drink your way to a glorious inner revolution. And the outer revolution is coming soon. Cheers. Let's continue with what a mouthpiece for the establishment Vox are saying on the subject of John Bolton. Trump pursued diplomatic talks with North Korea and resisted escalating tensions despite a resumption in missile tests. I remember that, Rocket Man, all that stuff. That was pretty cute, wasn't it? And even after reimposing crushing sanctions on Iran, Trump repeatedly said he'd be willing to negotiate a better nuclear deal with the Islamic Republic's top officials. There's little indication Trump wants to ignite another war in the Middle East, despite his tough Iran stance. It goes to show that Trump is in control of the most important aspect of his foreign policy, whether or not to go to war. Would you argue that that is the most important aspect of the United States of America's foreign policy and indeed maybe even domestic policy? Let's have a look at what Glenn Greenwald's got to say about John how am I supposed to live without you, Bolton? John Bolton is not only the country's most bloodthirsty and deranged warmonger. He's thirsty for blood and he's deranged, but he wrote in Dick Cheney for president in 2020 and will do it again this year. He likes it. Yet he's beloved by CNN and MSNBC who treat him, or which treat him, as a wise foreign policy expert solely because he bashes Trump. Does this help you to understand that we live in a state of delirium, that they have no principles? They have no principles over at CNN. It's terrifying that the principles of justice are no longer blind but have one eye on a particular outcome when it comes to the election in your nation in November. It's terrifying that the legacy media don't print all the news that's fit to print, but convey all the propaganda that makes sure it goes their way. It's terrifying that an organization as vast and sprawling as Google are willing and able to manipulate outcomes in elections and create a news cycle for you that traps you in the very delirium that we have to awaken from, that we have no choice but to awaken from. This is George Galloway, rather brilliantly in Parliament, ripping a new one for the establishment on the subject of this escalating tension, in particular the failure of the government or the media to properly demand accountability for the initial incident that led to Iran's attack on Israel. You know me, I'm an anti-war guy, uh, so I don't think any violence is right, uh, of course. So let's have a look at George Galloway in Parliament reminding people that there was an attack on the consulate, which is essentially an attack on Iranian soil. Let's have a look. There was not one single word in the Prime Minister's statement of condemnation of the Israeli destruction of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, which is the proximate reason for the event everyone is here in concert condemning. He was not even asked to do so by the front bench opposite. Kay Burley is the only person so far to demand that of a government minister. We have no treaty with Israel, at least not one that Parliament has been shown. And the Iranians are not likely to listen to him 
when Britain occupied Iran, looted its wealth, and overthrew its one democratic socialist government in my own lifetime. Look at how your elected leaders laugh and scoff. Look at them. Feel them. See who they really are. Now, they're human beings. And as a man of God, I offer them nothing but love and compassion. But as a person that's awakening, that wants to change the world, what you are looking there right now at that frozen screen, that's the problem. These are the people that we cannot trust. These are the people that we must oppose. These are the people that we must prevent steering us towards Armageddon, which is precisely what they're doing right now. Let us find new alliances. Let us find new ways of working together in beautiful concert so we can continue to oppose this terrifying corruption. Let's see what Rishi Sunak, WEF stooge, hedge fund profiteer for Moderna, has to say on this subject. Uh, well, Mr. Mr. Speaker, what, whatever may have happened uh, a few weeks ago, it is absolutely no justification for launching more than 300 drones and missiles from one sovereign state towards Israel. It's as simple as that. As simple as that? That's so amazing, isn't it? Like the complexity of the Middle Eastern conflict. It's as simple as that. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to see more uncensored content where free speech can flourish, join our live stream. Click the link right here to watch the next video if you want to, or become a member of a growing movement. Download the Rumble app and you'll be informed every time we make a new piece of content. Stay free.